Hi guys, welcome back to another video in the series of Jenkins Automation. So in today's video, we're going to talk about email notification and view configuration. So in that, we'll talk about these points. First, how to create upstream and downstream jobs, how to configure them. Second, how to install an email plugin for Jenkins. Third, mail configuration for jobs. Fourth, how to send a success or a failure mail after any build success or any build failure for any build. And then we'll talk about creation of specific jobs. And this creation for specific jobs is view kind of a thing. There are three types of views in that. We'll talk about all of them and how to create all these views. And then at the end, we'll talk about potential pitfalls. So what is potential pitfalls is kind of a thing when you create something and there is a chance that it can go haywire and your job will fail or the success or failure mail won't come and something like that. So with that being said, let's dive right into the video. And once again, if you're not, if you have not subscribed my channel till yet, kindly do so because it motivates me to create more videos for you. So let's move into the video. So first of all, go to new item and enter a name. This name will be taken for your first job. So we'll create a few jobs and then select the freestyle project and click on OK. Once done, you can write something in the description. That is totally optional, but I'll write something so that you can easily identify. So this is first job. That's all. You can come down, go to build and add a build step. This would be execute Windows patch. We are using a Windows command. So we'll be using echo and we'll be writing something over here. Let's say first job and just click on apply and save. That's all. Now again, we have to repeat the same steps. Go to dashboard and click on new item. Once done, again, it's a freestyle project. Give it a name of second job. Once done, just click on OK and you'll be creating a third job now. So now in order to do that, uh, first we complete this in the description. We'll write again the same thing like this is second job and repeat the same steps of adding a batch command. Let's go to build and add a build step. Execute Windows batch command. We'll echo something like the previous job. Echo. Second job. That's all you have to do. Apply and save. In the third job, we'll just copy the second job and we'll create a new job in another way. So let's click on new item. We, we have to complete this first. So let's let's go above and write third job. Once done, click on copy from and type second job and select that pop up. This will be copied. This will save us some time. That's why we are copying it. Now in just place of second, just write third. It's the exact copy of the second job. Come down change it to third job. That's all and apply and save. So we have created three jobs. If we go back to the dashboard, we can see there are three jobs. First job, second job and third job. Now this all view looks quite clumsy. So we click on first plus sign. We see three options, my view, list view and build pipeline view. Build pipeline is for build pipeline. List view gives us a list and my view is automatically displays all the jobs that the current user has an access to. We'll select the list view, give a name, my jobs and write description. You can write anything. I'll write just my jobs and that's all. Now in the job filters, you can select all these jobs which you want to see in your view. And that's the beauty of jobs. It will select and give you a very beautiful view and it will segregate everything, whatever you select in the jobs. So you can create your own view. It's very simple. Just click apply on OK. And then you have a new view named as my jobs. And we have three jobs over here. First job. Let's go inside. Click on configure. Let's go down. Or you can click on post build actions. It will directly push you. In that we have an option of build other projects. In build other projects. We'll write second job and we'll select it. 
there are three options stable unstable and fails we want to move forward only when the trigger the build is stable so that's why just click on apply and save once done you can see the downstream project is second job so once this is built it will push to second job now let's go to second job we are back to in the view second job and we'll do the same thing with the third job here you can see that the upstream project shows first job let's go to configure and do the same thing go to post build actions drop down and select build other projects there is one peculiar thing about this is you can select any number of projects like third job or even you can select the first job as well but uh, like for kind of a flow thing we'll just have third job only but we can select parallel jobs if you want to do that that's one other thing so we'll just select the third job same the stable build and we'll click on apply and save so that's all we have to do now what we'll do is we can see that upstream projects and downstream projects are first job and third job in this second job let's go to my jobs back to our view what we'll do is we'll just trigger the first build click on build now let's go inside open a new tab and then you can go to first first build so this is already built because there was nothing just printing something go to console output and you can see it has printed first job go back to my jobs and then you can see the other jobs would have been triggered the second job which is the downstream project for first job let's go inside you can see that the first job upstream and the downstream third job is also completed so we have just completed everything just by doing one click on first job so that's how a normal flow looks like when declarative pipelines were not there this used to happen in this way so this declarative pipeline is kind of a fairly new view so these are the things you can see the build number one you can see the console output it will show you success and the third job so this is how it's done guys now we'll try something of a negative scenario kind of a thing so let's go back because this was a positive scenario what we'll do is we'll go to first job we'll go in the configure section let's go down it's taking some time let's go down and in the execute command we'll write some gibberish so that it cannot compile or it cannot write anything because that does not mean anything this ASTF we'll just click on apply and save now we are expecting this to fail and let's see what happens now we'll click on build now let's scroll down you can see that the build has been triggered but it has been failed now this has been failed so what happens to our downstream project let's go there and understand it we'll go to second job and you can see that the first job which was the upstream project is failed so that's why it has not been triggered because we have given the condition of stable similarly go to third job it will also not run because the second job has not run so that's how it works guys let's go to my view back and you can see that it, it didn't not it did not run so let's go back and fix this and we'll just give the echo command and we'll print the same thing which were which we were printing previously so we have seen a one example of positive scenario and one example of negative scenario so I think this is clear now we'll just again run it and see that everything will go green let me open it in a new tab and then you can see that it has run it will pass it will go green great and then you can see that the second job will be running again once you click over that you can see that the third job will be triggered it is pending because it's waiting for second to be completed which is completed now let me refresh it yes it is completed so that's how it's done guys we are talking about positive and negative scenarios for first second and third job perfect 
Now let's go to dashboard and go to manage Jenkins. We'll talk about the plugin now. So go to manage plugins and look for a plugin in installed. This is Jenkins 2.28. So I think it is already installed. So you can just type email over here, email extension plugin. It is already installed. So I think it comes by default. If not, you have to go into available and you have to write that name for email extension plugin. It won't show it there because it's already installed. So this is not needed. Okay. So I think we already have it. Let's go back to dashboard and go to manage Jenkins. Now we can configure the system for our SMTP services. Let's go there. We'll be talking about the email configuration part now and what needs to be done. So you can just scroll down or you can do and control F over here. And in this control F just type notification and it will show you extended email notification. This is the thing that we are going to configure. We guys are using Gmail. So we'll give the SMTP server address for Gmail, which is smtp.gmail.com. Now every company has their own SMTP server address, which you have to enter in case you are doing it for your company. SMTP port, we have to change it, delete 25 and write 465 over here. There are multiple options. You can just scroll down and other things, but we have to do some advanced settings. So let's go back and click on advanced on the right. Here you have to give the SMTP username as your mail ID. I have typed it wrong. Let me correct it. So this would be your company's email ID. If you are doing it for your company, generally it's a distribution kind of a thing from which the mail comes to the distribution for developers and DevOps. In change password, click uh, delete the default password and give the password of this email ID. Again, I'm saying it every company has their own SMTP server. Use SSL, click on that, come down, come down, keep coming down. There are other options as well. So you have to write something in the default recipient. Copy this email ID and paste it over here. It has to be the same. Once done, come down, come down, come down and then email notification. First enable the debug mode because it is required. And in this email notification, again, you have to do the same thing. Just click on right side and there are multiple options over there. Failure, but we need an email for everything. So click on always. There are multiple options over here. You can select anything, but we'll be doing always because we are expecting every mail to be delivered. So again, in the SMTP server, write smtp.gmail.com, which is again the copy of which what we did above and the default user email suffix. You have to write, click on advance, use SMTP authentication, give the username over here, use SSL, click on that same email and same password that needs to be done. So these are the basic settings that you need to do. Oh, okay. And SMTP port 465, which we already did previously and reply to address can be leave blank, left blank and UTF-8 has to be done. Now we'll test the configuration by clicking over here. We'll give any address you can give. We'll give just logic ops only so that we can identify. And on your right, you can see there is an option of test configuration. Let's see what happens. Now it has failed and it is showing that the username and password not accepted. There can be multiple things that went wrong. It, it, can, it showed you that bad credential that something is wrong with username and password. So these are the potential pitfalls. Now there are multiple things that can happen. I'll talk about two potential pitfalls. First is less secure app access. You have to allow this. Uh, it is off by default and you have to make it on. You can see on the screen. This is the one thing that I saw. And second is the two step verification. This has to be off. You can see in yellow highlighted that it has to be off. So these are the two potential pitfalls that can block you for your error. I have fixed this and I'll test the configuration again. Once done, email was successfully sent. Now, where is the email? Let me go to my inbox and drag it over here so that you can see that I have received the email. Just a moment and you can see test email number three. Let me zoom in. 
you can see it has sent the mail this is a test mail sent from jenkins so guys you can see that everything is fine and our settings are done so just click on apply and okay just make sure those potential pitfalls the two errors are addressed if you face any issue so i think we are good to go here but there are a few settings that needs to be done in our jobs so let's go to my jobs first job go inside and we'll go on configure once done we have to go to post build actions click on that and add a post build action from the drop down there are two options available email notification click on that there are multiple things that has to be done but we won't need that so let me select the other one editable email notification so this is the other option let me delete the first one i have deleted it you have to leave it like that and you can come down come down come down and in the attach build log by default it's do not attach but we have to see everything that has been done so we'll just attach the build log so that's that's thing that's the thing that you have to select click on advanced settings come down and we have to do a few things come down come down so these are the other settings like developers and recipient you don't have to do anything but in the add trigger you have to select always because we always want to trigger it and always want to see what has been happening with our builds whether it's failed whether it's passed anything that happens so that that's all you guys have to do click on apply and save it once done now it's the time to test what's been going on go back to my view and then click on build now for the first job once done you have to wait for some time and take a look at the other jobs let me click on first job and go to down and fifth job which is time 711 which is right now and console output you can see email was triggered for always and it has sent a mail and there are other few settings which we attached a log so it has been done so this is green this has passed let's go back to first job let's go back to my view and you can see that the third one also run for 4.3 seconds and this has been done recently so 16 seconds and 6.1 seconds everything looks fine what we can do now is go to my mail id and you can see there are two email that has been successful first job build number five successful so this looks perfect and click on build these are the logs you can either download it and take a look what has been happening that's what we did in the settings and now you can see everything in the build log let me go to my first email again let me click over here newer and you can see again the same thing so this is the basic idea of how a build logs gets generated and attached to a mail and get you can receive on your email id so that's 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 what we do and expect it over here so i think you guys have understood it this is a very basic idea of what we do in email configuration view creation and understanding how to create an upstream or downstream job so if you have not understood anything please feel free to comment below and we have eradicated the potential pitfalls we have talked about that and we have learned how to do that so thanks guys if there is anything i can help you with please feel free to comment below and i'll see you in the next video